What is up, players? Wobos tape in this mud. Welcome to how to paint a sister of Averlorn. Oh, I just saw that I have to do this little gem at the end. Um, the last thing we did before I finished the video is paint on all the, the reds for the, the gems. So, missed one. Uh, basically, we're doing everything up to here. So, base coats and a wash on some of the things. So, the colors you're going to need are... Ah, flesh, uh, Coelia Green Shade, Russ Gray, Balthazar Gold, Dryad Bark, uh, not yet, Seraphim Sepia, Raglan Flesh Shade, Corn Red, Girly Man Blue, Steel Legion Drab, Lead Belcher, mm, didn't do that yet. White Scar, I'm trying to look at the paints around me. Abaddon Black, Doombo Brown, and I think that was it, yeah? Yeah, that was it. Oh, no, 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 this one. Temple Guard Blue for the bow. So this is how far we get. Oh no, I missed one too. Cadian Flesh Tone for the skin. So this is how far we get. Uh, base colors, a little bit of a wash, and um, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Stay tuned for more. Part two, we're gonna be um, hopefully finishing up and getting her to look just like this test model that I did. Hope you guys stay tuned and enjoy. Enjoy part one. Latest players. Alright players, what up and welcome to part one of how to paint a sister of Averlorn. So the, the reason I decided to use this model is because it is, um, it, it's got an open front so you can really see uh, how to paint the torso area and the bow is still kind of pretty dominant so you can tell how to do all of the the bow areas as well if anything you don't have the uh, arrow part of the bow but I'll, I'll teach you how to do the arrow if you're also working on doing an arrow um, so I'm just gonna kind of go willy-nilly and see if you can follow the first thing I like to do is paint on the the skin so I'm I've come up with a concoction that I call lady elf lady elf uh, skin tone I guess so what you're going to do is you're going to take skull uh, white scar, <laughs> skull white, and Cadian flesh tone. That's old school, grandpa. Nobody paints with white skull anymore. And what you're going to do is you're going to do, um, what was it? One part white scar to one part Cadian flesh tone. So what that means is you just, you're going to mix them, preferably in a wet palette, if you can make one, or a ghetto wet palette. And in fact, why don't, why don't I make one right now? See if I can find the empty wall. There we go. So this is this will be my wet palette for today. I'm just gonna use this side of the uh, this little case that I've got. I'm gonna put some water in it, and let's do so. Let's make a, a ghetto wet palette since I don't have. I don't think I have any parchment paper with me right now. So we're gonna make a ghetto wet palette simply by taking a napkin or paper towel and just putting it right in there and get it nice and, get all that water nice and soaked up. A little bit more water, Oops. Yeah, and you kind of, you just, you want it wet enough so that it's wet to the touch, but that if you press it, water doesn't come up and pool on the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our paint, and we're going to mix it. <clears throat> so, I say one-to-one, -one. I think I did, one-to-one. -one. We'll use that to start with. So however much Acadian Flesh Tone you put, you're going to... Try and get the same amount after washing off your brush. And put the same amount of white scar 
Now, if Games Workshop was smart and did dropper bottles, we would be able to measure, but Games Workshop doesn't do such things. I found that this is much better than using Kislev flesh. It kind of resembles the old Talarn flesh, and that's, that's what we're aiming for. So now that I've got that, let's put my wet palette on the side, my ghetto wet palette. I'm going to paint it onto our lady elf's face. Oh, sorry. So out of focus. Face and neck, if you would. Yeah, the reason I'm doing skin first is because it really, it's like really motivating for me to start with that rather than have her with a white face the whole time. Speaking of white, you may notice that I'm working with a white uh, undercoat. And that's because the model just, I think is gonna end up looking better with a white base coat rather than gray or black. So that is perfect. We're gonna let that sit for a little while. I'm thinking of doing a whole how to paint blonde hair tutorial, but for now, we'll uh, go through it. Steel Legion Drab. I still got some, some water on my brush from washing off the, the, the skin tone, so it's kind of, that's good. You're not just painting undiluted, uh, painting with undiluted paints. In fact, this is like the ghetto, I'm not going to say ghetto, but this is the quick way that Games Workshop said in their latest White Dwarf how to do blonde hair. And um, it's not as, it's not as detailed and in my opinion it's not as good as the way that I like to do it but for for this tutorial it'll it'll serve its purpose his name was Thomas master excuse me Igor whose name was Thomas this porpoise that I once served <clears throat> you served the porpoise once? Yeah, I served him uh, when I used to work at the uh, Crip Ghoul Bar downtown. It was... It was like Cheers, where everybody knows your name, but it was called Screams. And there's this porpoise that came in once, and uh... And I served him. I was working there at the time, you see, to pay for Crip Ghoul College. Igor, I don't even know what you're talking about right now. Well, you say it served its purpose, and it reminded me that I once served a porpoise. Igor! Yes, master. You stop that tomfoolery right now, son. Nobody wants to hear about your silly stories. What are we doing? We're taking our belt as our gold and we're painting on this very ornate circlet on our nice lady else's head. Okay, so that's pretty cool. We're also going to take our Balthazar gold and paint down here. And we'll come back to painting up more gold bits later. I think that's, that's fine for now. Next thing is we're going to take some Castellan. No. Yeah, here we go. And take some wah flesh and we're gonna paint the back of the cloak.
Now I'm painting this in the style of the the heavy metal team. Um, and this is one of the rare times that I actually don't mind the color scheme that the heavy metal team chose for high elves especially. I usually don't like all the white and some of the new I get I like I give Games Workshop props for I give them kudos for coming up with uh, and putting an emphasis on not just sticking to the you know the blue and whites but um, like some of the new various color schemes for the different armies like the uh, trace with the with the lions that red and yellow or Iatane with the uh, the Phoenix where it's predominantly like yellow with red accents I mean I think that stuff is just fantastic overall though it's like they're unless they're gonna do a second wave I feel like Games Workshop kind of um, missed the ball on their new models the these shadow warriors slash sisters of Avalorn I think are the best ones I've been looking at the Phoenix model I've been looking like at the uh, sky chariot things and I am not really not really feeling the 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 way that they were designed. Like their aesthetic and just the way they look to me is a little there's just something not right about it. And I've I've been listening to lots of podcasts and uh, just various people on the internet looking at different forums like Warseer and DACA to see what they think and uh, what what their problems with it are. And it's just uh it's interesting to see what everybody is saying, you know, just how it's not it's not aerodynamically sound. It's not a. Uh, doesn't make sense how. Uh, like how the Sky Chariot doesn't have like a way to slow down. I think 40k Radio said that it just looks like it has to constantly be in motion. Like the ego can't just hover, because once it does, <laughs> the chariot's gonna fall down. Um, there's no way to start slow and build up. Like you just gotta like jump off while it's in mid-flight so yeah I mean not that anything in Warhammer really has to make sense and be like what it work like how it should or else rhinos would be huge in order to carry 10 space marines right but uh, it's just something that struck me as weird because fantasy always seemed to me a little bit more I don't know what am I talking about? I don't know. Did I ever tell you that I serve the paupers? Yes, Igor, you told us that. Back to this elf. We're gonna take Jayad Bark. And we're going to paint her uh, scabbard on her back as well as her boots and her corset. And start with her boots. Oh, another thing is a lot of these models are going to be. Oh, sorry about that. Another, uh, a lot of these models are on. Um, like scenic bases. Like this model here is stepping up onto a stair of what looks like an old ruin with a skull in the front. There's another one that's stepping on a on a helmet of a of a dark elf, and the dark elf helmet has like a skull inside, like the the guy inside was beheaded. So a lot of cool little details that I'll I'll give you kind of my a rundown on how I would paint it, but that's really like up to you. In my head, these sisters of Avalorn 
are like protectors of the forest. So they're almost like wood elves. They're protectors of the Avalon forest and the fluff. I'm really glad they brought them back. I heard that they used to be in older editions. In fact, I think when I first started playing, uh, I didn't have the High Elves book. My friend did, but I, I can't remember if there was ever a model for it. I was only ever interested in orcs and goblins. Those were like my favorite. Those were my boys. that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some Russ Gray. This is interesting because this is not how I would paint the white, but it's building up from this kind of bluish white. And uh, I tried it on my test model, so to be consistent I'm going to do it with all of, all of them. You're going to kind of just paint it on the inside of any white cloth. And what you're doing with this is you are covering up any mistakes that you made with the green any little flub ups that you did with the uh, the brown from the boots and uh, you're basically just kind of creating we're creating shadows that we're going to uh, build up on and for new painters out there this is a cool cool technique you'll definitely want to want to pick up and learn uh, you want to get anything that is white cloth like the inside of the cloak, the, uh, the sleeves. This is our base, we're gonna build it up to, to a nice gleaming white, but for now, So you want to get it all in the shadows, especially. And I think that's all the white. And then there's a little swath, swatch of, swatch? Is that like a Swedish, Swedish watch? Igor, you're very talkative this video. A new, a sorry. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build up. Actually, before we do that, let's let's uh, paint the silver. Lead Belcher. So definitely the sword and the pommel. Or I guess, no, what's that called? The guard? The hand guard? And also, it looks like in the Games Workshop ones, the they're wearing um, these like gauntlets, these armored gauntlets. So that's a good thing to know because you might make the mistake of thinking that like you have to paint their fingers in flesh co uh, colors, flesh tones, but it's actually a gauntlet. And then we're going to paint this little. What's this called? A vam vam brace. Not sure what that's called. But that's what we're going to do. side and, f and uh, before we get to that let's do these scales and these um, uh, like the torso piece of her armor and get the little line to that's right under the corset or her uh, her leather the leather part of her armor 
these are such fantastic figures oh my gosh they are so expensive but um they're so good I've, I've read that they're not that good in play. I don't know if that's true. It's really sad if it is. Uh, if any of you want to comment on that, uh, I really like the look of these figures. They're so beautiful. And Games Workshop's usual policy these last few army releases are that if, uh, if, it's, if it's expensive, then it's good in the game. Like the Tau, the new Riptide suits and the broadsides and stuff, I mean. They are a model making company in the business of selling models, after all. And up here on the scabbard. On the scabbard! It's the last. We're gonna paint. <laughs> hey Igor, you small student. What time does Sean Connery like to go to Wimbledon to watch the game? What is your Wimbledon, Master? And it's like where they uh, it's where they play, you know, tennis. And take Rune Fang Steel now. I don't know what that is, Master. It's a game where you you have like a racket and you use the racket to uh, hit a little ball back and forth on a court. Oh, you mean like? You mean like cat mitten? I don't even... I don't even want to comment on that. Taking Rune Fang Steel and we're doing the, uh, the rim of this little heart jewel up here at top. And I think that is where all the silver is going to be for now. At our model now. Yeah, all right. So, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna paint wah, flesh onto the trim of her armor. Tennis. Excuse me? This the time. And Sean Connery goes to Wimbledon, Master. Tennis. How did you know that? I never told you that joke before. No, but I heard you saying it to your lady boss friend. Oh. It's funny, right? You gotta say it with the Sean Connery accent, though. Tennis. That wasn't very funny, Marsha. I'm gonna roll my eyes at you just like she did. Everybody's a critic. All right, what we're gonna do now is take my watch off. We're going to paint the uh, bow in Temple Guard blue. Now, when I read this in The White Dwarf, I was, I was floored. I, I fell out of my chair. It's because you're a drama queen. No, it's not, Igor. It's because Temple Guard Blue is like the new equivalent to Ice Blue. And Ice Blue was a highlight color. Like, there's no way you would dream about using ice blue as a as like the first color on something. It's just so already so bright. What I would do if I mean if, if I had been writing the article was I would 
naturally assume that you would start lower, like say with Sotec Green or, or even as dark as uh, Stegadon Scale Green and work your way up. But uh, I, I didn't and I trusted White Dwarf and lo and behold, it's actually, uh, it was actually pretty, pretty good that I did. Came out, came out real nice. Right, so that's about how it should look right now. We're going to continue on, see if we can get all the base colors on, and um, actually going to paint a little bit more dark, uh, dryad bark onto the top of this boot. It looks like it's kind of just hanging out there. Evens it out really nicely. Okay. Go back and clean up the mistakes. Clean up any pink streaks that you see. Um, beautiful thing about these models, well one of the beautiful things is just how how poseable, or not poseable, but how good they look in their poses. Games Workshop for picking these, you know, static poses, which I am not a fan of, for having to do that, I think they turned out, they turned out very well. They could have come out a lot worse. Like, I, I love the Skaven models. Um, like the Storm Vermin. I'm gonna say the Storm Vermin. I love the Storm Vermin. I feel like the Storm Vermin were, was more along the line of how the rest of the Skaven models, like the Clan Rats, the new Clan Rats, they just look a little bit too static. And the, um, I don't know, there's just something about the old Skaven models that you really had to build from, from scratch, from nothing. And give them each, like, their own posable, posable, you know, stances and stuff. There's just something about that that I thought was really cool. You had legs and torsos and arms, but I mean, given that those old models, they just look, they look really bad now, uh, and they're able to do a lot more with the posability of the models. But at the time, I just thought, you know, the the new clan rats, they look just a little, a little off. Pudding. The clasp at her neck is going to be in gold, so we're going to take our Baltas, our gold. We're going to paint that up. We're also going to do gold in the pommel of the sword for the rune, or at the base of the sword for the for the gem surrounding the gem, and for this rune here. Now on the back side, just like Eldar, they have these like gems inset. Okay, we're also going to take the gold and we're going to um, paint the flames on these armor pieces here on their arms. I think I shaved down this side. I shouldn't have. Oh well. We'll paint on the design freehand. We are almost done with base coats. We'll do washes and then we'll end it there for tonight. Oh, my baby term again.
Alright. Next we're gonna take Doom Bowl Brown. And we're gonna paint that onto inside where the armor meets the white cloth of the sleeve. You've got a little gap. And this color is going to go right where that gap is. Both sides. It's a little flash of color. It's not going to be red. We're not going for a like a a bright red. We're just going for a little bit of little flash of color, just like that. Now we're going to take some Abaddon black, and this is how I do my eyes. You have to really thin your brush, uh, really get the tip as fine as you can make it there, and just drag it along the edge of the paint in the top of your pot, like so. And then we're going to paint horizontal lines. Let's see, are we in focus, Igor? Yes, master. If you make a mistake, like I'm doing, let's also get her mouth while we're here. Uh, also with the black, what you're going to do is you're going to get all the gems. If you make a mistake, like I was saying, just go back over with the uh, flesh paint that you made. That mix of Cadian flesh tone and... Uh, white scar so anything that is going to end up being a gem we're clearing in black this is also how I do gems for uh, my Eldar for anybody really I'm going to get the little gap in the scabbard since she's got her sword out We're also going to get the cloth on her back that's holding the scabbard in place. I think I'm making pretty good speed with these guys. Games day here in Hawaii is the beginning of June. This project, formerly Project Bretonian Bowman, is, is clipping along really nicely. Still a lot got all my other projects going. Um, a lot of my stuff is at my lady friend's place though, and she's on the mainland, which is why you might notice that the lighting here is a little bit different, because it's at my old place. Right, that's gonna do, do it for that. So now we're gonna go back and we're gonna take that mixture that I had made of Cadian flesh and a uh, white scar, and we're just gonna retouch up the skin by the eyes. Sorry if it gets a little bit out of focus. I'm gonna have to some surgery here. There we go. I see that her circlet on her head also has pretty big uh, areas to attach it to. So you want to make sure you're, you're accurate in where those are. They almost look like sideburns on these, on this bigger circlet, like this character head here. All right. Is that just about everything? Um, on the chest, she's got a, uh, or on her armor piece, on her torso, 
Uh, some of them are all silver. Uh, what I like to do though is right around the heart, I like to take a, my Balthazar gold and I like to paint these uh, flames coming from the side. Ah, moth! Ah! Swarm of locusts. Sorry. Is that you, Festus? <laughs> I was just trying to get your attention. Cause you haven't painted me up yet, old boss. So you cast Swarm of Locusts on me? That's right. Alright. <laughs> Let's leave it. Let's leave it there for now. Um, washes, washes, washes. So we're going to uh, do a Athonian camel shade, oh, Coelia green shade. Sorry, Coelia green shade for all the green. For some reason, BL tan green. Like when you see that name on the shelf, you think, oh, that's 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 nice. It's going to give a nice vibrant green. But it doesn't though. It really doesn't. Uh, this Coelia green shade really does the trick. So, let's start it all. Now, the trick is, what you have to remember is that shade will go down with gravity and it will pool, it will pool and leave the ugliest watermark. Hey, so I didn't realize how, um, how long this video is getting and it, uh, I guess it cut me off in my last uh, clip. So we're just gonna finish here. Last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give this lady some eyes so she's not all spooky looking. We're gonna use white scar for that. Take a little bit of it on our, the tip of our brush and we're gonna do horizontal line within the black horizontal line. great thing about these new models is it really gives you a nice area. They, they pop the eyes out just slightly more so than the older like the Empire models or the um, or other models with eyes so it, it allows you to do this I call it a eyeliner technique where you've got the black black around the eye and, um, and then the white on the inside. And take a little bit of Abaddon black now and I'm going to paint underneath the eye to clean that area up. And on this side Okay, and then we're gonna do just a little vertical stripe through the center. So you're gonna start from the bottom and um, just kind of paint up. And you want the stripe to be as close to the center and that you want it to start from the, the bottom and go to the top or vice versa. If you are if you only get it on the bottom part, then it's gonna look like he's really bug-eyed, or she's really bug-eyed. And if you only get it on the, uh, if you, you, what am I trying to say? If you get one that's not in the center, then it'll look bug-eyed. So this one kind of looks a little bit bug-eyed. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if this kind of fixes it. We're gonna paint Raikland Flesh Shade on 
to the skin. I'm gonna start with the neck down here. And this is gonna give your combination of a uh, Cadian flesh tone and white scar. It's gonna give it a really nice rosy kind of appearance. I think this is how I'm gonna do all of my skin from now on. It's really, really good. So the eyes are still a little bit buggy, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and kind of play with uh, play with them a little bit more. Last thing we're going to do while that shade dries is we're going to take some corn red and we're going to paint the gems. For just about all the gems, what we want to do is start at the uh, bottom and paint up the right side and leave a little bit of the color before so with this heart stone we're leaving a little bit of the black in the upper left corner I also want to do that for all of the gems if you can leaving a little bit of black will help you out later when we're painting on a little white reflective dot but now you might notice that your um, your silver is looking a little bit cloudy so uh, don't worry about that because of the Guillemin blue the Guillemin uh, don't worry about it so that's where we're going to leave off today so uh, next time we're going to be painting up the whites we're going to be highlighting everything up and we should be finished in part 2 so thanks for watching everybody see you in the next one